this video is going to show us how to um, taper in the top of your canister. So some of you wanted to know how to make the canister go in a little bit before you put the top on. And I wanted to show you guys this. Not everyone has to do this. This is only for those of you who feel like this is what you won't need to do for your project. And I had shown a couple people um, virtually, but I wanted to make a video just in case you were a little confused or uh, needed a little extra uh, support. So um, what I do is I'll cut out on four sides. You could do three or four. I'll, I want to do four for the sake of the video, like a triangle wedge on each side. And then we'll score and slip and pull it in and score and slip it together. But first what you want to do is make sure you mark it so that it's even. So let me look. So I have to look at it from an aerial view. I take my ruler. You can use a ruler. You can use a notebook, a piece of cardboard, whatever is nice and straight. And I put it over top and I just make a little groove here. So I have a groove here and I have a groove here. And then I'm going to turn this and make sure that I make an even groove on both sides also. So what you want to do is once you make four marks, you should have four marks. One, two, three, and four. Okay. And I just did that by laying a ruler over top and making sure it was centered in my circle and then made a little mark. Okay. So you can see my four grooves. One, two, three, and four. Um, also, when you go to do this, make sure that you're shape is round before you do this okay so if this is misshapen this will not work out for you um, you kind of have to make your cuts very even on all four sides in order for this to look right so that's why i have you kind of pre-measure where you're going to make your cuts so that being said uh, what i'm going to do and you, if you want to be very exact about this you can um what i like to do is i use the ruler and i'll line it up um, my slice at the half inch marker on the ruler. So this is one, this is a half inch. And I'll just mark at the inch and the zero. Not the end of the ruler. The end of the ruler is not always zero. So watch out for that. Um, if you wanna just eyeball it too, you can just kind of say, okay, I'm gonna make a triangle. I'm gonna, just gonna bring it down, just kind of draw it in freehand. Or you can also cut it out like a piece of paper or oak tag to make sure you're making a nice even triangle shape. Okay, I would bring it down to at least halfway, maybe even a little more depending on how big of a taper you want. Um, if the wider you make this, the more drastic it'll be. The longer, the more subtle the transition will be. But you don't wanna go to the bottom. I would stay like at least two thirds and up, okay? So once you've decided how big you wanna make this, and you can always cut more out after, but let's start with this. I'll cut my triangle down to the point, and down to the point. Carefully wiggle it loose. There we go. And the, the easy, that was the hard part. This is the easy part. I go around, I line up my dashes and then just trace the triangle. Okay. It's easy unless I move the, there we go. There we go, I got one there. Line up my, my dash. Okay, trace it again. Make sure it's straight. You know, and it should give you a general even triangle shape for each time you draw it. I got one more drill and then I'll cut them out. There we go. So now I'm going to take my trying my triangle tool to cut out my triangles and I'm going to cut this out. Do not use the needle tool. Do not use this one. Okay? It has a round edge on it. This this tool is meant to be used by the tip not by the by the body of it. This one is meant to use for cutting out slices, okay? Because it has that knife-like angle. So if you use the, the needle tool when you go to cut these out, you'll have a 
a rougher edge, it won't look as nice and clean as if you do use the triangle tool. Two, three, and four. This one's a little crooked, so I'm gonna straighten it out as I cut. <clears throat> but at least I know the shape I used. There we go. All right, so you should have four wedges cut out all the way around. Um, this section should be relatively the same on each side. If you notice one much larger or a little off, you can always repair it back and recut it if you have to. But try to make sure they're even before you cut. That's the most important thing. It'll be harder and harder the more you mess up on this. All right, now I'm going to use my rake tool. And I'm going to rake, 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 rake this whole part on the inside of all four sections. Score. Score, score, score. Rake, rake, rake. Really scratch it up. The more you scratch, the better it connects. Don't be shy and timid with your scoring and slipping. Okay. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to use my sponge. And I'm just going to drizzle a little water over it for my slip. Okay. Or you can just use a brush. I don't have a brush on me though. Oh, I do have a brush on me. Just kidding. You can use a brush. Get the brush wet. And just kind of glide it over gently without smudging back all the score marks you made. All right, <clears throat> so then you're gonna carefully kind of squeeze these all in together here. There we go. And then you're gonna pinch them and blend them. So I blend the outside first to kind of lock it all together. And if there's a bump, you can smooth the bump out just by pressing it in and smoothing it. And right here. Blend this, and I blend this one, and then I have to blend the inside. The inside's the one part that's a little harder to blend, but let's get the outside set up. Um, the inside, when you go to blend the inside, you can use the back of a brush if you have trouble reaching. I have short fingers, so it's a little harder for me. And I just kind of go over that seam and make sure I blend it smooth. Go. A little bit on the top. There we go. All right. A little bit on the top here. Just smooth that out later. Get these all blended on the inside now. I feel like I don't like. My connection on two areas where this one this one feels like it kind of caves in a little bit so I'm gonna add a little clay over it like score and slip a very small coil not a lot of clay because you don't want it to be bulky and if you score the clay in the spot there's a little bit of a dent here which makes it look more obvious I like to hide those seams as much as possible so I'm just gonna add a little clay over it and smooth it out so at one point if you ever feel like it's not a good sealing bond of the clay. You can put a clay over it. And I would also, um, if you can, or if you have time to, maybe put a coil on the inside too, if you feel like it's not joined together well. There we go. This is a little bit better. That helps, and around the rim. Now also with the rim, when we go to put the lid on, that should steal any kind of seam that you have up there as well. So it definitely needs a little bit of clay on the inside right here. It's all about squishing it together. You can even rescore it a little and smooth it. By doing that, you're, you're redistributing the clay on the surface, which is mushing it kind of all back together again. There we go, that's a much better seal. And then just make sure that it's rounded. 
that right now. Always make sure that your squad and slipped areas are secure. And then I can just use a brush to smooth out some of the areas. Get a little dent here too. Add some support clay right here. It's a little dented. Okay. And then you're just gonna make sure it's rounded and looks even. Get a little water on the bottom and smooth out as much as you can. And then there you go, there's your angled in. So my um, wedges that I cut, my darts that I cut out of here were relatively thin, but long. So you can see how it goes all the way down to about right here. All right, and then there's pretty much how you do it. If you wanted bigger ones, you can just make the slices wider, like wider this way. 